Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you for tuning in. Let's do an update on some recent uh, fish that I acquired and uh, take a look at uh, the other fish here in the fish room. Let's just take a quick a quick spin or a quick lap as I like to call it and uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Well, if you follow my channel, you know that my friend Whip brought over a true red tear. Beautiful fish. He acquired this fish from Predatory Fins. Check out that channel on YouTube, Predatory Fins. Just a great, uh, a great channel. They deal in, in monster fish. This fish was just a couple inches apparently when he got him. And you can see him now. He's got to be pushing maybe, I don't know, six, seven inches at least, and he will get up to 12 inches in length. So he'll he'll be a beast, and they are notorious for being uh, aggressive. So it's gonna be very interesting, the strategy I take with him when he's out of quarantine. I'm thinking of adding him to the 210 gallon once he's out of quarantine. Of course, he's already larger than a lot of the fish in here. Bigger than the Salvini, the Red Terror, Nicaragua, the Jack Dempsey, as big as the Chocolate Cichlids, as big as the Albino Oscar, not as big as the, as the Red Tiger, not as big as the, uh, as the Vieja, but he certainly would get, get there very shortly. So at the same time as adding him to this tank as a precaution, I think I'll follow your advice and add dither fish. And in this case, with the silver dollars that I have currently in the uh, in the 90 gallon, I think I would just move those those silver dollars just to distract him and the other fish and not just add one fish that gets singled out. Go ahead and uh, take the school of silver dollars that's in here about six of them and and put them into 210 as a big distraction they were working as sort of a dither fish in this tank and and lowering some of the aggression between the uh, geos the geos would go go after each other from time to time but i think the buenos aires tetras that i brought in are the new dither fish in this tank so they're creating enough of a distraction so that the fish don't go after each other that much. So what do you think about that? What do you think about moving those silver dollars over to the 210 so that they uh, provide enough of a distraction at the same time that I bring over that uh, true red tear? Tell me your thoughts, especially if you had experience with something like that. The uh, planted tank continues to rock and roll. The little red tail rasboras that were recently added to it are having a great old time, very active, eating well. The new neons are not swimming around the way I thought they would when I added five more to the clan. So there's about 15 neons in there, but they continue to hang out. They like the, the, the security and comfort of being underneath the plants. So there's 15 of them in there now, and every now and then they'll come out and you'll see a flash of a real pretty color. Rasboras continue to school very well. Love the way they swim around. The lemons have kind of gone back to staring at the right wall here, but they're very pretty. Auto sinkless. You can see the neons from here. So, this is a 29 gallon quarantine tank, 
and in it I have, if you watch that video of my local uh, fish store visit, Music City Aquatics, I went to go visit Alec and his new shop there, and I picked up these three electric blue acaras, and they seem to be thriving. They're eating like crazy. I mean, in the three, there's one little runt whose belly was a little bit, a little bit sunk in, but he seems to be filling out. I'm, I'm feeding him some crushed up extreme community flakes. I just crush them up and drop them in and they just go crazy over them. So they're eating well. And in about a month, I might just put them in the uh, planted tank and hopefully they'll play nice with the other fish. If you've uh, kept electric glue coras in the community tank, with tetras and neons and things like that. Comment under the video. Let me know how that went for you. This uh, SAE, Siamese Algae Eater, will be staying in this tank. Very healthy, very active. But I think he is eating this plant. So, uh, and I am giving him zucchini and wafers doesn't matter so I guess they eat blackbeard algae but they can also be plant plant destroyers so just something to keep in mind with the SAEs I've added some of the sprite that I picked up at the aquatic critter to this tank just to give a, a more of a hiding area and you can see there's some there's a baby guppy there's a baby guppy in there there he is really want them to make it. I haven't had a baby guppy make it. They've all gotten eaten, but uh, I'd love for him to make it. So I put some Sprite in here, give him a hiding spot. Might even add some more, but uh, the Sprite seems to be doing well. There's that Nerite snail, constantly laying white eggs everywhere. But the light bear tank is, is doing fine. Take a quick hop over here to the better tank light it up a little bit they're waiting for food I feed him once in the morning he's waiting for his uh, pellets they get a they get a, a variety of food they get north fin beta bites they get uh, some fluval they get fluval food the bug bites from fluval and they also get a, uh, a of food from uh, from Sarah. It's called Beta Beta Gran, which is a, a Beta specific food from from Sarah. So they get a variety of, of, of foods. He's all fired up. He's challenging me. He's he's the alpha male in the fish room. They are building bubble nests, which is great, and the sprite that they love playing in continues to grow like crazy. This tank gets serviced maybe once a month. I just leave it alone. And I do drop these uh, almond leaves in there. Adds minerals, they even peck at it. I hadn't seen the uh, coolie loaches for a while. So I moved some of the uh, decor and boy, they came flying out from underneath that cave. So um, they're alive and well, they just, they just like to be hidden and that's okay. We go over here to the um, 300. You can see how much surface breakup there is. That's one of the outputs. There's two outputs and they're partially, I mean, they're at the very top of, of the water line for two reasons. One is to uh, oxygenate, really break up the surface to create oxygen exchange. And the other reason is in the event of a pump failure or a blackout, the tank will only back siphon only so much, only to the bottom of that. It'll back siphon into the sump and not flood the fish room. If you have it way down in the tank, it'll continue to siphon the tank and you'll overflow your sump. So just a tip if you have a sump. You can also drill a hole, like you can drill a hole. If I was to drill a hole near the top of it, that would break the siphon immediately. So uh, there's a couple tricks you can do to prevent a uh, to prevent a flood of the uh, of the sump. The 
but these fish you can see are, are rocking and rolling. Look at that dark blue purple, the way this the way this uh, trout gets like this dark blue purple. So pretty. Right, there he is. This this guy right here. Crazy looking hawk. DCI yellow continues to blossom, become a stud. Getting a little more color on the uh, turquoise hap. Tangerine tiger. The eye biter with his big old bumper on the bottom of his lip. The mouth on this guy. Malawi gar. My mostly yellow Venusus sand diver, beautiful fish. The Bucachromis, the Lethronops. Strigatus, beautiful bicolor, 500. Here's the runt of the tank, but they leave them alone. So that's all good. And over here in the 210 gallon, green tear. Love the color of a green tear. Beautiful Sally, the Salvini. The gentle giant of the tank, the vieja. Beautiful pink in the cheeks, black in the body. Little hints of blue. The female uh, Jack Dempsey. Beautiful firemouth. Pick this firemouth up locally. Most of the fish you're seeing here are from the Cichlochak. in Tempe, Arizona. I've got a discount for them. It's in the uh, description under the video. Nicaragua, beautiful fish. Chocolates are hiding in the back, but the second, second I drop some food pellets in here, they'll go nuts. So at any rate, let me know. Let me know what you think about adding, my plan about adding this guy after quarantine to the 210 along with all the silver dollars. Let me know if you think that's gonna work. He is a beauty. Look at the trailers on the dorsal and anal fin. Beautiful spot by the tail. Just a really pretty fish. I thank Whip for that fish. And I hope he plays nice. Hope you enjoyed that update. Certainly share your thoughts and comments below. Uh, you know that I do listen to them, and very often I do act on them. Uh, we certainly do learn from each other on this channel. Thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's at 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And uh, if you like the channel, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell, and consider becoming a monthly supporter, a Patreon or Garage Gang member. Details on that program are below the video. Thank you, my friends. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.